One of your friends is a huge Buddy Holly fan. Ever since she learned you're a pilot, she's been begging you to fly down to Clear Lake, Iowa to visit the Surf Ballroom and the Buddy Holly Memorial. You look them up online and you think they look pretty interesting. Plus, the town is located at the edge of a lake also named Clear Lake, so if the historic sites are boring, there are other options. The forecast looks great and an Archer 3 is available. Now you just need to figure out how the heck to get from Rochester, KRST, to the nearest airport, Mason City, KMCW. Using today's technology, it is tempting to jump in the aircraft, enter your destination in the GPS, hit the direct to button, and follow that magenta line. However, doing this will not meet the FAA requirements. The private pilot ACS indicates you must be able to use pilotage and dead reckoning. <laughs> but what, what the heck are pilotage and dead reckoning? Well, in this video, we'll not only define them, but we'll plot out a course that allows us to use them. And, and if you stick around to the very end, I have two bonuses for you. Okay, let's jump into the definitions. Pilotage can be defined as navigation by visual reference to prominent landmarks. Dead reckoning is defined as navigation solely by means of computations based on time, airspeed, distance, and direction. In plain English, no pun intended, to meet ACS standards, you'll need to be able to plan flights so you can navigate and be able to tell where you are using a combination of ground-based landmarks, pre-calculated headings, distances, and elapsed time between those landmarks. Okay, now let's draw some lines. <laughs> to make the process easier to understand, I break route planning down into five steps. Step one, identify the straight line route between your departure airport and your destination. Now, you can't always use this route, but the fewer heading changes you have, the easier it'll be to plan. So, let's plot a straight line from KRST to KMCW. And doing that, we see that our ground track, or true course, will be 219 degrees. <laughs> well, that was easy. In step two, we finger fly the route looking for prominent landmarks, hazards, or places where we shouldn't go. Starting from KRST and following our line, I notice this route parallels a major highway that will be very easy to spot from the air. Next, just past where the highway turns west, our route takes us between Austin Municipal Airport and the town of Rose Creek. Rose Creek can be identified by the buildings and an intersection of an east-west and a northwest-southeast road. Next, we'll pass Lyle on the left, and Lyle is, Lyle is identifiable by a group of buildings at the point where roads and two railroad tracks intersect. Coming out of Lyle, our course loosely follows a set of railroad tracks heading southwest. If we keep the tracks on our left, they go through a couple of little dinky towns named Carpenter and Grafton. Just a little bit further, we'll pass between Manly on the near right and Plymouth on the left. At Manly, we'll start looking for KMCW. It will be at the intersection of two highways and right next to a big lake, Clear Lake. Now, step two is complete. <laughs> During step three, we'd adjust the route for any hazards. During our finger flight, I saw windmills, towers, and shorter obstructions, but there was no special use airspace, flight restrictions, or hazards that would make me change the route. As long as we stay high enough, we'll be fine. So for now, we'll leave the route as is. In step four, we'll identify possible stops for fuel, stretching, bathroom breaks, or emergencies. In this case, since this trip is so short, even I should be able to make it without any stops. So again, we'll leave it as it is. Step five is the really fun part, breaking the route into segments and defining checkpoints. Uh, some quick thoughts about checkpoints. One, try and keep checkpoints 10 to 20 miles apart. This is close enough to keep workload manageable, but not so far away as to risk getting lost. Using this rule of thumb, we should be looking for between three and five checkpoints for this trip. Two, try and pick checkpoints to the right or left of the airplane. They'll be easier to see. If you fly right over the top of them, you may miss them. Three, checkpoints must be visible from the airplane. Roads, towns, lakes, rivers, railroad tracks all make decent checkpoints. And four, to make the checkpoints even easier to find, try and define them using more than one landmark or feature. Based on these thoughts and the information from our finger flying, three landmarks come immediately to mind. The first is where the interstate makes the turn from southwest to more westerly. This is 17 nautical miles from the airport and definitely fits our rules of thumb. Lyle will also be easy to identify, plus it's 13 nautical miles from the last checkpoint. 
And finally, manly also fits our rules of thumb, so we'll use that as our third checkpoint. Since Manly is only 9.7 miles from KMCW, we don't need an additional checkpoint. Well, there you have it. We've plotted our true course from KRST to KMCW. We've made sure we avoided any hazards or obstacles, and we've broken the trip down into manageable segments. Now we should be ready for the next step, figuring out an appropriate altitude, and we'll do that in the next video. <laughs> but wait, before you go, here are the two bonuses I promised. First, you usually want to put checkpoints 10 to 20 miles apart. However, for your check ride, put your first couple of checkpoints closer to the airport. Why? Well, because you have to demonstrate pilotage and dead reckoning. And you'll need two or three checkpoints to do this. So the closer you put these to the airport, the faster you can demonstrate your skill and then move on to the next tasks. Second, even without using ForeFlight for calculations, it can still help with planning. For example, in step two, when you finger fly, if you finger fly the route using both the sectional and the aerial map views, you'll see more details to help you identify checkpoints. For our flight, the aerial view shows that Lyle has an ethanol processing plant just outside of town. That oval of railroad track is very easy to spot from the air, but it isn't on the sectional. Whew, so there you go. We now have a route that allows us to use pilotage and dead reckoning to visit Clear Lake, the Surf Ballroom, and the Buddy Holly Memorial. Plus, we've got a couple of thoughts to make things easier. If this video was helpful, please click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Also, please share this with two friends who might be struggling with cross-country planning. Finally, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I'll see you next time.